when I was producing The Fall Guy, we had a, a writer from Esquire who sat in the office with me for like eight weeks, the, the fly on the wall, watching how one episode would go from beginning to end, from, from an idea to the uh, night that it actually was, sh was shown on the air, which did take about eight weeks, so it was pretty, pretty fast. One of the good things about TV is this great speed. You, you get an idea and you get to write it and then see how it worked, realize what was good and what was bad because you've seen it right away, and everything, the whole process, and then so you can quickly turn into the next one. But, but his point was that he was watching Larry Brody, who had had this idea, this, this theme he wanted to incorporate into an episode of The Fall Guy, which was not a show known for its truth, and watching, watching me fight to get that theme in. It was a, the theme was something about friendship and, and, and about the fact that ultimately, and that this was my belief, it wasn't something I discussed with anybody, but I had a personal belief that when it came down to the choice between principle and humanity, you should pick humanity. You should love your friend enough to violate your principles to help your friend. So this was about the Lee Majors character uh, doing something for a friend. And the process is, is so long and so involved with network approvals and notes on, on every step of the way that I was constantly watching the various places that I had strategically located uh, the, the scenes or the dialogue that reflected this theme get ripped out. Get, get changed. They weren't changed because people were against the theme. They didn't even notice that there was a theme. They would just be changed for, for practical considerations of, of, uh, of the actual filmmaking process, or they'd be changed because someone would say, I have a funnier line of dialogue, and the funny line didn't have the meaning that the not-so-funny line had. But, but they got changed. You're now down to a place where it's the last day of shooting, and the last scene being shot, for, unusually, the last scene was being shot as the last shot of, 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 of the episode. And it was the one place left where, where it still had my theme, where, where at the end, the very, the tagline of, of, of the entire episode was, was Cult Seaver saying something about what he would do for his buddy Ozzy, played by Buddy Hackett. I go down to the set with the, with the reporter to watch this. Very excited. All right, we're going to slip it back. You know, it's like a guerrilla fight. I, I got, it, got to say something that meant something to me, and, and, and it's going to be there. This is it. We get to that last scene. We do Ozzy's close-up because he's a big star, Buddy Hackett at the time, who, who Lee Majors admires. And instead of, so instead of Lee going first, and blowing off everybody else, he lets the guest star have the first close-up when things are fresh. They don't do a master shot because we're behind schedule and you're just going to use the close-ups anyway. So it starts right off with, with Buddy. He does his scene. He, he does it great. Now it's Lee. They do the entire scene with Lee up to the last line. He's about to say the line that's the reason I wrote the episode. And Lee stops, puts his hand up in front of the camera and says, all right, that, that's enough. We should end on Buddy's line. And walks off the set. <laughs> There's truth in television. 